Okay everyone, let's go ahead and review some of the basic smart notebook softwares. So when we talk about creating content, there are a number of different ways obviously we can do that. We can do it through linear presentations, we can do it through zooming presentations like Prezi. Um, you can do screencasts through Jing or obviously I'm using Camtasia so we can we can do that as well. But your, uh, your other options really um, center on an interactive whiteboard. Right now, schools typically have two choices. There's either a smart board, which is kind of the, the Kleenex of the tissue, and then there's pro boards, which are, I, I don't want to say generic brand because that makes it sound inferior, even though it's not. Um, it's just a, the brand that didn't come first, basically. Now, the schools are kind of divided on this. They, I, I don't think they really have half and half. Maybe it's two to one smart boards to pro boards, but the, the functions are essentially the same. We have smart board here on the Fontbonne campus, so we're going to go ahead and use that as uh, our catalyst, but do know that a lot of schools have pro boards. Um, it would be nice if we had, you know, some to practice on just so that you can get an idea of how the differences, uh, and there's usually just little nuances, but um, they essentially serve the same function. They work in the same way. They do pretty much the same things. Our first part is going to be actually creating the content in the notebook software, and then our second part on presenting content is going to be with the board itself, so you actually understand the productivity tools and how to manipulate things and manage them and, and stuff like that. Now you saw in that sort of five tips video, I think the guy made a very good point at the beginning that the, uh, the smart board is actually not really where all of the information is at. All of it is in this software. All that, all that the board itself really does is just project that information and it allows you to interact with it during your lesson. But you need to have a lesson set up in the first place in order to do that. Now if you're in middle secondary, you may be using a lot of uh, PowerPoints and or documents, things like that. You can incorporate all of those things into here. You can do it ahead of time if you want to. Uh, and then what you can do is go ahead and write notes and everything in your um, presentation and then save those, give them to students so that they can use it to uh, study for exams or whatever. And that's a, a very common way to do it. Today, though, we're going to cover uh, some of the built-in tools that are a little bit more dynamic than you would normally find, and so we're going to go ahead and cover that. Now, this what I have here is the latest version of Smart Notebook, which is version 11. A lot of schools have older versions. I, even the boards in our own rooms are 10.8, and I was surprised when I, I loaded this into my computer most recently how different <laughs> it looked. Uh, the toolbar here it normally spreads all the way across, so if I'm fumbling around a little bit and trying to figure out where things are, it's just because they've rearranged everything. The good news is with all technologies, they almost never take away a functionality when they update. They just move it around somewhere. So if you say, well, it used to do this, well, trust me, it still does that. You just have to figure out where they put it. So in the notebook software, you're going to have this loaded onto your computer. Remember, you can get a 30-day free trial if you want to go and use that. Just be careful about when you load that. It's the only one that you get. It's the only shot that you have. You're going to want to use it when you need to do it for a lot more than just one assignment for one class. Okay? Uh, we do have all of this software available on campus on, in the lab computer, so you can go ahead and, and create your lessons there. We have a room set up where you can do tutorials. So there, there are places on campus for this. Your school should also have this available if you're out practicing, so just kind of be aware of that. All right, when you log in, it's got the same functions we've seen in all of the softwares that we've looked at. It's got a file option where you can get a new one, open it, save it. All of your edit functions are here, your views here, your insertions are all here. Frankly, this is the area that we really don't use uh, very much, though. We probably use it far less in this software than we do anywhere else. But it is worthy to note here that there is a help bar and that there's there are tutorials. So again, with all of the software, don't mess around with it for more than a couple of minutes. If you can't find your answer, just go Google it or you know search your help and figure it out. And as long as you have a detailed search term, you'll figure out what it is you're doing. Now over here on the left is going to be your toolbar and you've got your, this is the tab that indicates your, your pages, all the different pages that you will have. Um, your 
content, including you can see that, that it has certain items that are built in, pictures, uh, interactive and multimedia, notebook files, backgrounds and themes. These are all, that. this is what is all available in the system right now. We will talk though about how you can go outside of, it's called your gallery, but if this is not enough for you, if you're looking for more things, you can look in your Smart Exchange, and that is um, an example of how Smart is a, a for-profit company, but they have an open source entity. And so Smart Exchange allows teachers to build their lessons in notebook software and share them with all the other Smart users. And we're going to see in class how many there are because it's, it's unbelievable how much there is here. Um, you can also, they have a, a partnership with Google, so they have a, a Google 3D warehouse here real, available as well. Uh, this section is going to attach any files that you want to show, and it's because I'm recording, everything is running a little bit slower, but uh, you'll be able to attach files to your notebook here. Uh, you'll be able to change things about your um, font size and things like that here. Up here, you're going to find the same area that you found before, so if we click on um, add a page, then it will go ahead and give you some, oops, let's go ahead. It, it's, it's spending so much time thinking that it's taking a while now. Okay, so if we go on and go ahead and add a new page, you can see it automatically adds another one here. Uh, if you want to delete the page, that gives you that option as well. Again, this disk indicating save uh, is always here. You can open a new file. And these are really more for your productivity. Uh, once you get to present your things, this is where you're going to find a lot of this stuff useful. These are your screen options. So you can view this as a full screen, which you can see. Then it takes away all of your stuff. So when you're actually presenting, that you can find that helpful. Um, there are all kinds of other options here, but we're not going to get into those because those are really what you use when you're actually presenting with it. Uh, let's see, you can paste items, you can do screen capture, uh, tables, if you want to insert tables, your options are here. Same as we found with the other technologies, at this point everybody's agreeing that rolling over and just picking uh, your different, uh, the rows and columns that way are, are much easier. You can see that there uh, are some design elements here. We have a new toolbar that pops in, and so if you want to go ahead and include things like your line style, which they give you some options here, you can go ahead and make some adjustments. Um, you can change colors. It gives you fill color, line color, and text color. So you can indicate all those things right here, which is nice because a lot of other softwares, they break it down into different windows and you have to go back and forth into each of them. This one has them all in one section. It also gives you a more colors option. So if these are not enough, and these are pre this is a pretty decent selection, uh, only because it also runs into pastels, which is nice. Again, always want to be aware of your students with visual impairments because some of these things may be hard for them to see. Even for students who don't have visual impairments, be careful about using things like yellow unless you're highlighting something because it's writing that's very hard to see. So uh, with everything, experiment with it, try a few different things, and then view it as your students would view it. And if you're having trouble seeing it, they're going to have trouble too. Okay, um, sorry, I clicked off of there. Then, you, of course, there are all of the, the basic font size and um, uh, type options that you can select. Um, there are more text options here. You can do formulas and um, you can do vertical text. There are lots of co cool things you could do there. So that will give you uh, some of your table options. There are measurement tools available here that you can go ahead and include. Uh, this is Smart Exchange, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then uh, these are really, the, well, the pens are more productivity tools when you're actually uh, presenting your lesson. Your text options are here. There are lines here that are available. So you can, just like we saw with, um, oh, I think it was some of our presentation tools that had lines. You can go ahead and draw these in between one concept and the next. And so if you want to display, you know, a comparison of the two, it basically will connect it using this type of line, but you can also create, you can go ahead and, whoop, <laughs> go ahead and create another line looking something like that. You know, you can have all kinds of options here. There are darker highlighting or darker underlining, so lots of different choices that you have. Uh, let's see, these shapes are also actually very handy. So if you're trying to do, if, if your drawing is not so good and you do want to draw a curve but you don't want to do it free form, you can go ahead and do it this way. So it's showing any kind of curved information or connections can be valid. This one has a little um, arrow at the end of it. So if you're trying to show a flow or a process, that can be beneficial. And since I'm really making this dirty, I'm going to go ahead and start a new one to show you uh, shapes. 
So if you're using shapes, lots of different reasons you could use this. We did talk about uh, Venn diagram use in class. And so if I am creating, you know, a shape here, I can create one there. Say so I can create one there. And we'll show you how to manipulate these things too. I've created these new shapes, but you can see that if I click on another part of the screen, it actually creates another shape for me. And say I don't want to do that, I just wanted to drag it around. Make sure that you go ahead and select back to your mouse. So that once you do that, then you can move your shape around. I can go ahead and see this and, and delete that if I want to. I can move this around here. And then I could go ahead and, and type in uh, various text that I wanted to. If I wanted to show similarities between two concepts here and then the differences on either side, those are going to give me that option. So that's just some use for shapes. There are lots and lots of different things that you can do. Color options, line options, you know, all the same things that you would find. These are um, some of the more unusual shapes that you can use. So certainly if you're teaching younger kids and you're teaching them shapes, that kind of goes without saying. But there are lots of pedagogical reasons why you can use shapes to incorporate concepts, and that's the real advantage to using this kind of software. All right, so let me go ahead and clear this again, get one more and I'll show you what the gallery does. So if you click on the gallery, uh, this is, we talked about using images and video and things like that for um, your class, but always being aware of copyright. And when you use Microsoft products, you can use Clipart and you're good. If you go into Google Docs and you use their search function, you're good there too. So um, if you use things that are actually embedded within the software, you don't have to give it a whole lot of thought. You're usually pretty safe. Um, if you go outside of it and you start incorporating, that's when you just want to be aware. You don't want to, I don't want to tell you you can't use that stuff, but you just want to be very aware of your um, of fair use before you use those things. So if I click on here, I can see Gallery Essentials, and at the very top here, you can do a search term if you're, there's something very specific that you're looking for. Otherwise, you can sort of browse through their content and see that they've got it all, all of their images and interactive media and everything are all kind of broken down here by sections. And so of course in some social studies I'll go ahead and be biased and I'll go ahead and click and expand on the geography options here. And I do that too not just because I'm biased but because they actually have some really great map options here. So if I want to show students and I could see finding this is very beneficial I can look at a series of maps and I can see here that when I click on Africa maps, if I click on pictures, I can see what all my options are. And there are just some general outlines with color of all of the different countries here. You know, that will give you just, um, if you're trying to just show general shapes, that can be valuable. But if you're clicking on detailed maps and I click on pictures, here's where if I'm teaching middle or secondary and I want a little more um, explanation and everything. That's where I can get this. So just to show you an example of one thing that can be done and you're going to have time to play with it so that you can figure out what works for you. But if I click on Africa South labeled and I bring that over, you can see it, it works almost identical to the way uh, Clipart works in, in Microsoft. All you got to do is just drag it over and or you can there are other options obviously in your drop down but I can see that all of these countries are now labeled and I can run through with my students and talk about you know how these different uh, what what these different countries are for and you know what they're what they should know about them and how they should know where they're located and the other thing that I can do is I can take the map that is blank and I can include that. And let me go ahead and I realize that this screen is not matching what we're doing here. So let me go ahead and expand on that a little bit. Okay, so now everybody should be able to see everything. Okay, so now, oh, <laughs> see I'm on shapes again. So I went ahead and just made a shape by accident. All I got to do again, just make sure you go right back to the mouse. And now I can see that their students can see that the, they can compare the two. Okay, so I have some options here. When I'm presenting, I can hide this or one of my, I'm sorry, not there, one of my options is to actually cover the whole thing up. So I can scroll it over, and I'm just showing you this right now once we get to presenting, we'll do that. I can have them come on up with their pens, identify all the different countries, and then when I'm actually presenting, pull it back over and say, okay, were you right? And then we can go ahead and compare it. And so that's a, a very easy, simple way to incorporate concepts like that. 
when you go into um, the uh, Smart Exchange, and some of these are these are just images, but you will see various options that relate to interactive and multimedia. There are games that are created already in here. Uh, there are uh, homeroom and morning calendar and just all kinds of crazy things in the Smart Exchange. So if I am looking for, let's say, and I'm going to have you guys, I think that you can create an exchange account without having um, the uh, the software, but we'll see. We'll, we'll give that a shot. So if I want to click on visit the exchange, this is where I can find all of the really cool things that other teachers have created. And again, check here before you start making it yourself. That's going to be really important. All right. So I'm not actually technically logged in to uh, this smart exchange yet. But it will open up, and uh, I will warn you that it opens up an IE, unfortunately. <laughs> so just, just so you're aware, if you're going uh, through the through the notebook software, so it will bring me to this page. And again, I can either search for something very specific, or I can do something by grade level. I can do it by subject. I can do it by file type. It highlights some of the top downloads. So this one is a download that I, I always show everybody. It's called Morning Calendar. And if I go ahead and click on that, what, if something piques your interest, you can go ahead and look at You can open it in Notebook Express, which will basically allow you to look at it and uh, play with it a little bit, but <clears throat> excuse me, not actually download it. So you can just look at it here and preview it. So you can see what this one, this is actually a morning calendar set, and students can come in and move on the smart board their name up to whether or not they have home lunch, chicken sandwich, taco, you know, things like that. They have a morning song that is embedded in here. They have a calendar that you can easily manipulate, seasons, uh, today's number, there are different activities there, and they can do that in money too. They can identify the weather through this thing. So all these things have always been done by a regular board in the past. And now if you have Smart Board, or and I know Pro Board has versions like this too, you can just use something that someone has created and manipulate it. So if you're counting, this is a counting mode, you can count up or down for various things. And then uh, at the end of all of these, you can usually find information about the developer. So if uh, something doesn't quite work or if you have a question a lot of times they will provide when you download it they will provide a teacher guide or contact information um, not all of them do but quite a few of them do and so if you have questions or anything about it you can usually contact that person and a lot of people have recommended this this one in particular has 26,000 downloads so it a lot of people have used this one and uh, find it incredibly valuable so when you're searching it's worth looking at how many downloads you've had to actually because if people recognize that it's a really great resource, then uh, you can spend a little less time worrying about it. And this is just one example. If you're doing um, attendance in middle and secondary, there are options there too. Uh, when we looked at, let's see, I think it's still on the main page. Yep. When I look back on the main page here, this homeroom attendance, this is actually balloons popping so that when you uh, students go in and they see their names on it, all they do is hit the balloon and it pops. And so uh, that can be, you know, just a real quick, easy way to uh, run an attendance so that when you actually have to do it through your system, all you got to do is look at that sheet, pop in the numbers, and, and you're done. It only, it probably all in all, only saves about 30 seconds, but you'd be surprised at how valuable 30 seconds can be uh, when you're in a 50-minute class. So just be aware of that. We're going to spend a lot of time playing around in the exchange, playing around with some lessons. Nothing, you know, incredibly crazy or dynamic, but uh, at least enough to get in touch with the tools and get comfortable with the tools so that we can learn how to actually use them for presentation purposes in our next class.